Hi friends, today we are going to be sewing the new pattern from Seamwork and it is called the Ziara and I have already cut out the pattern so we're just going to jump into actually assembling it and then we'll take a look at what it looks like on. So let's get into it. Okay, so here we have the Ciara right here and it's kind of like a whimsical dress. It's got like some gathering, not too much. So we'll just be following the directions here. And um, these are the line drawings, the flat drawings here. And we'll be doing this curvy size. I will be grading, I have graded rather. Um, I'm a 26 down bottom and then I am about an 18 up top according to this. Um, so I have already cut this out. Let's go to the cutting. Oops, let's see this. So this is a pretty simple pattern. We've got a couple of pieces here. One, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten pieces here. And I said ten because you're doing actually four pieces for D. And let's go ahead and get started. So taking a look at the fabric choice that I'm, I'm using, I'm using this. Um, it's kind of like a rayon. It's really nice. Um, this would be the right side and this is what our wrong side looks like. I know it basically looks the same. There are some slight differences that you can kind of see as far as the shine goes. I chose to go with this fabric because one, it looks amazing on my skin tone and two, it is super flowy, has excellent drape and I figured it would be perfect for this. Just quick reminder, if you're using, when you're using your wovens, make sure that you iron it. Um, for a pattern like this, I think that it's okay to kind of not have it ironed so that it has this really nice crinkle effect. But if you um, are a stickler for things like perfection, which I am not, you should absolutely iron. Today I'll be using my Bernina 590 um, to make this dress. So we'll go ahead and turn it on. I actually do not have any matching thread right now. Um, so I'm just gonna do this in a white thread because um, the only color that I have that could closely match is a, um, not really a high quality fat thread. And when using a machine like this, you definitely wanna use thread. For this project, I will be using a two different foot, well actually three foot feet all together. I will be using a ruffle foot to gather my stitches as well as a, um, a rolled hem foot in addition to the basic foot. In addition to my Bernina, I will likely be using one of my sergers to finish the edges so that we do not have any fraying. Um, I'm not exactly sure what color I'm going to be using, but it'll either be this Singer or this Juki, which are both preloaded with different color fabric. I mean, different color threads. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to be doing is doing a stay stitch on pieces A, B, and E, which are the front, the back, as well as the facing. The reason why we stay stitch is because even though this is a woven fabric and typically does not stretch, it does have mechanical stretch, and I would like for these things to stay in place, so we stay stitch in order to make that happen. I'm going to go ahead and move my um, needle over just a little bit so that it's closer to the edge of the fabric because we are literally just stay stitching it. So I want it to be as close as possible so that as I stitch um, to put it together, you cannot see the stay stitching. Okay, so now that we have um, stay stitched all of those pieces, there was only three. What we're gonna do now is I'm actually going to finish my edges of these pockets on my um, serger. I decided to go with a black thread, so I'm doing it on this Singer. Um, for no particular art reason other than it was directly next to the Bernina. So we're gonna go ahead and just finish the edges. So 
just around this area so that way they do not fray. <laughs> Okay, so this is what they look like after I finish these ends. If you do not have a serger, then you can absolutely use an over overlock stitch on your sewing machine to essentially get the same effect, or you can use your pinking shears. The purpose of this is purely just to make it so that your edges do not fray. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna be attaching the pockets that we did just finish to the skirt piece, which is here. And so when you're cutting out your skirt pieces, it's essentially just two rectangles. Um, there is no specific up or down. I have marked where my pockets go with this here clip. So I'm gonna go ahead and attach them here and yeah. And then after I've attached the pocket, which I've done here, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and run this entire length of the skirt through my serger so that way this seam is finished and we won't have to worry about any fraying. All right, so your seams or your fabric should look a little like this where you have finished off this entire side right here. You've got your pockets. So now what you're gonna do is you're going to take your skirt piece, your right sides together. You're going to go ahead and so this side seam of the skirt. So what we're going to do is we're lining it up on the side. We're going to sew down this side here. So around these pockets and then continue down the side seam. And I'm going to be doing this just with a basic straight stitch on my Bernina. Okay, so just so as a reminder, we're just going to go ahead. We have... Um, a half seam inch allowance here and so I'm gonna go ahead and just do a straight stitch down here okay so now it's time to gather the stitches um, on the skirt piece I'm actually gonna do this on my serger because it is easier for me that way the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to go ahead and make this the longest length bring that all the way up this side button here if you are on a juki what that looks like is essentially taking it to the longest and longest here, okay? Um, move that back because I'm not gonna be using this machine which needs to be cleaned. Don't judge my life. So we're gonna be doing that on this here. Now my fabric is on in here. I'm gonna, I did not turn my machine on yet. So we're, or maybe it was on, it is on. Okay, and so now we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna hit that. And so it's gonna look like a regular stitch you see here except I will show you what we pull through to make okay, it. So right. now that we've sewn all the way around, what we're gonna do is you see those two threads that are right next to each other? We're gonna be pulling those and that's gonna be what creates the ruffle. I will show that now. So here we have, and you can just undo some of the stitches so that you can see which two of the um, threads line up together. And I should have done this in two different colors so that it was obvious, but... Um, and here we have them right here. They look like Gemini twins. And so I've got my two threads. And so then you just pull through. And as you can see, it's already beginning to ruffle. And so then I'm going to do this all the way around. Very similar to how I would if I was using like a double stitch to ruffle. So, or together rather. So boom. That's what that looks like. The next like. step that we have here is we're going to take the front piece and we're going to um, sew that to the back piece, sewing down these side seams for the top. And um, again, we're just sticking with these simple, simple straight stitches. So here we have that here. And so I will be sewing there we go straight down this seam here and so this is what it looks like sewing down the other side this is like one of my favorite features of the Bernina is just these simple button touches they get so much done so quickly right? and then once I finish this I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish my seams Again, I will be using my um, 
I'll be using my serger to go ahead and finish my seams so that way they do not fray. Okay, so now let's talk really quickly how you get even, even gatherings when you're doing a garment like this. I already actually attached mine. I cheated on you, but whatever. So what I typically do is I will take clips. I love using Wonder Clips. And so what I'll do is I will match up my seams just like this. Some people will do it at four, at like the um, in four places. I typically will just do it in two. And then I will just pull it so that there are the even gathers like so. And then when you're able to do it that way, you get a garment that has, and this is what it's looking like on the outside, some even gathering as opposed to feeling like it is being pulled more in one direction. So um, it is worth it to do it this way. It takes maybe a couple minutes longer, not too much longer. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and finish these edges here on the serger so that we have zero fraying because fraying is not fun. Okay, so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make the ring loops. And so you're going to take just one piece of fabric. We're going to sew the right sides together and then we're going to be cutting this in half. So let's go ahead and sew those right sides together. After I'm done with this, I'm actually going to go ahead and trim my sides off because mine was kind of looking crazy. You see, it's like so much like extra on that side, and I don't want that to now take. What we're going to do is we're going to turn this long piece so that's out. I'm using this little doohickey thing. I don't know what it's called, so I'm just going to go ahead and reach it in, as you can see here. And then it's got this like little sharp hook on the end that's going to kind of like hook into the fabric. And then as I, after I hook it, it's going to come on through. So there's a couple of these like little turners. If you are like, oh, I'm not spending money on something extra. You can also just simply use a um, safety pin, which honestly, some days it's like, easier to just use the safety pin. I like this because whenever I am making um, things like this and it's a long one, it's so much easier to just go through and just pull that through and be done with it. So now we're going to turn this. It is completely turned as you can see here. We've got this turned and now I'm just going to simply fold this in half and it. I've got my pinking shoes here. We're just going to hit it with a little cutting action. So now we've got two. The next step is we're going to take, I've got a bunch of these little loops here. We're going to take our ring, the rings, and slide the fabric through. Uh oh, it fell. Take two. We're going to slide it through here. And if you are a person who likes for things to match, absolutely choose a ring that matches your fabric. I personally do not care. So I've got this like taupe color. And so that's what I'm using. Um, I will find where that other ring fell in a second. And so then I'm just gonna take another one and do the other side. And I'm gonna take my clips because Again, I'm a Wonder Clips person, and I'm just going to clip both of them like so. So we've got that done. The next step is we're going to go ahead and clip those, um, those little circles that we just made onto your dress. If you did not transfer your markings from the actual pattern piece to your fabric, it's okay. Sometimes I forget too. So what I will do is I'll just fold that back piece in half. And I will typically measure about between two to three inches. I have a, um, I've got a ruler on my machine. So I'm just going to, I'm actually going to probably do the three inches just because of how this dress falls. So this is three inches from the, um, the center. So I'm going to go ahead and mark that. And then that's actually going to be where I stick my, stick my, um, oops, 
let's try that again because this is like real life i'm not this is actually my very first so one that i've ever done so you know we're just having fun with it right and so we're going to clip it to the right side so we're just clipping it together like so and so this is what it's going to look like and then i'm going to go and i'm going to base this on with my machine I also just pulled out um, some bias tape. Now, if you are a person who loves your things to match, you can absolutely make your own bias tape. Um, however, I will be using this single bias fold. It is um, a white. I wish I had like orange because that would be super dope, but I don't. So we're just gonna go with this. And um, so now that these are on, I'm going to go ahead and baste these in there and um, then I'm going to begin adding my bias tape. So, all right friends, so now it's time to add our bias tape. We're gonna be starting up underneath the armpit essentially and then it's gonna come on down. Actually, I should flip this out so that you guys can see and come around the back and then it's just gonna go up to the other armpit piece and that's it. So the way that we do this is we're going to attach the right side so we're not going to be working with the wrong side it's going to essentially go with the right side and then you like flip it over and in and then it's going to go on the inside and then it's going to look like this and it's going to be super beautiful so that is what i'm going to do right now and i will say that using a double or like an extra wide bias tape might actually be a little bit easier um, because what you want to do is you want to stitch in this like ditch right here that's where you want your stitch to go so that it's it's like perfect um and because there is such a little distance here it can be a little challenging but we're gonna make it work okay, so this is what it looks like with the first part of the bias they put in um and so what i did was i actually tried to stitch as close to my basting stitch as i could get and the reason why I did that is because when I fold this over like so, which is what is essentially going to put this into place, I don't want that a basing stitch to be seen. So that's why I did that that way. And I just think that it gives a sharper and cleaner finish. So now what I'm going to do is I am actually going to fold it over like this. And then I'm going to stitch as close to this side as I can get so that that lays nice and flat. Um, so yeah, that's what I'm going to do right so now. now that that bias tape is sewn in there nicely. Mm, Y'all, this looks so crispy. I do need to press it. I will do that at the end because laziness. So the next step to do, let's take a look at it. And I'm looking at the instructions on my computer. We've done that. We're going to go ahead and attach the facing to the front neckline. We have already stay stitched the facing. Let's find our facing piece. That's not it. Okay, so keeping up with the pieces can be a little tricky. Let me go find this piece and I'll be yeah. back. Okay, so we've already stay stitched this piece and this is going to be what attaches to the top what we're going to do now is we're just going to go ahead and finish this here bottom piece and i'm going to do that on my serger yeah we are almost finished with this dress mm. so now what we're going to do and we're going to fold these edges in like so if you've got your iron out go ahead and iron them so that they are nice and crispy again i'm not going to do that because i'm sitting down doing this video what I am going to do is I'm going to stick a little wonder clip here. The reason why we're doing this is because, again, we have some seam allowance here that we have to accommodate. So it's going to be like this, right? And then we're going to do it for the other side. Um, like a so. And you can see here where this piece is like dangling off. And the reason why that's dangling off again is because we added that bias tape there. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to actually be putting these right sides together so that we can go ahead and um, finish this off beautifully. So I'm going to flip this around, put my right sides together, and I'm going to go ahead and attach it this way. 
And this is actually going to be what creates our casing for our stri strappy strap, okay? So um, let's go ahead and get that sewn in, friends. Okay, so let's also really quickly talk about stay stitching. I was not a supporter of stay stitching before, I know, gasp. But now I am. And the reason why is because it really just does an excellent job of holding your garment in the position that it's supposed to be. Um, so yeah, stay stitch, friends, it makes a difference. Now that we've got that stitched together, what we are going to do is understitch this now. So why do you understitch? And you understitch to give your, your garment a nice, crispy, finished feel. Because what can happen is that when you're wearing it like this, right? Because this is essentially how it's going to be. It's going to be flipped over like this. You don't want it to do any of this flipping up. You want it to have a nice, clean finish. So we're going to go ahead and do an understitch just so that it stays nice and smooth. Okay, friends, and so I did the most questionable understitch job ever, but I'm not going to take it out because I've been working on this dress for forever and I really am just anxious to get it on. So now that the understitching is done, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the casing. And so we, the first thing that I'm going to do is that I'm actually going to sew this this uh, where I have surged right here. I'm going to sew that first and then I'm going to come up and make that casing. Okay, and so here is what we are looking like. I wish I had done matching um, thread here. But I do not have, like, I don't have nice thread uh, for my machine because Bernina only works with certain threads. So, yeah, that's where we are. Now we're going to go ahead and make the final okay, thing. So we are at the very last part. I'm not going to lie. I kind of wish that I had been ironing throughout this project, but I wasn't. Um, so we are going to go ahead and make the straps. Start out by ironing your fabric first. Don't be like me, okay, friends? And then we're just going to simply fold it over in half a couple of times to create our straps. Then we're going to, um, we're just going to add the rest of the loops, which I really like doing a style like this because it allows you to, um, you know, really custom fit the straps on your garment. I typically actually have a petite measurement from here to here. Um, and that's the only thing petite about this here body, which is fine, but I like that I can go ahead and, um, you know, do that. So I'm going to make this here strap just by folding it over. I'm going to essentially fold it in half twice and I'll reverse the camera so that you all can see how I do it and then we will be getting to the last steps of this dress. After we install this, the last thing to do is hem and this will officially be like the longest project that I've ever done. So yeah. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just going ahead and I'm starting to fold them down and in towards each other first. And then what I'm going to eventually do is set up a DIY like bias tape maker so that I can essentially just pull this through a little bit easier. I'm gonna take these two pins, and just put one right here. Kind of like at the beginning, I'm actually going to move it back just a little bit. Um, and then it's going to come over There we go. And then I'm gonna take a second pin and just go down just like a little bit, just a couple of inches. I'm actually gonna go down so that it essentially can fit my iron in between the two pins. And that was a little too close as my iron may have just melted that little penny pin pin. So I'm going to go down about five inches to here and stick this pin in the exact same way that we did this. Move this over some and we're secure. And so what this is going to do is it's going to make it so that I can just kind of pull this through and it's going to essentially make itself into the tape that I need. 
just like that. So what you guys can't see is that I'm pulling it with my right hand and then it's ironing flat there. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up. Okay, so now that our straps look like this, I'm just going to fold it over one more time like so and then iron that in place and then I'm going to be adding in a stitch on this side so that it holds it in place. So this is just like this. Yeah, I do wish that I had ironed the rest of this project, but you know, we are who we are. Be careful not to steam and burn yourself. All right, so now I'm going to grab my handy dandy tool here. And so I'm going to slide this through the biggest hole down here, my casing. And so I'm going through this casing like so. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just take one end of this here strap that we just made. I'm gonna hook it, hook it on in there just like I was going fishing. And I'm just gonna slide that baby through. You see, it's so beautiful, it's like butter. So now that I've done that, I'm going to take two of these and these go with the um, the little hooks. Again, if you're into matching, obviously I'm not because like I did this with th white thread. Who am I? So <clears throat> let's talk about how you actually make these things work because it can be a little tricky. So I'm going to, I just wanna make sure that they do it the same way that I typically do it. Okay, and they do. Cause you know, everybody's got their own sewing techniques. So we're just gonna go ahead and take one end, sticking it through this, and then we're gonna go ahead back through the other side. So we're essentially just threading it through like so. And so it will look like this and on this on the other side. So now that we have threaded it through that way, you wanna make sure that this side is facing up. Then you're going to go ahead and put that through your little loop. So now it's through the loop. And go ahead and move this up some more so that you have enough space. And then what you're going to do is you're going to actually take it back through that middle bar. So go ahead, pull this up so that you have some additional room. You know, you don't want to crowd yourself as you're trying to do this because it can be a little tricky. If you do need something like pointy to help you, go ahead and grab that. Um, I'm going to just see if I can do it by moving that fabric completely out of the way. And just so you can see what I'm doing here. So now we've got gone up. And I do want to make sure that my fabric does not get twisted because that's not sexy. Okay. And we're back down now. And so now you're going to have to move your the top fabric kind of back through there and line this up. Let me just make sure that you all can see what my little fingers are doing. So this is what we're looking like. And you just wanna make sure that these fabrics are nicely lined up, not twisting around. Cause like mine is a little twist, mine was twisted. Okay, and so make sure your fabrics are nice and lined up. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold essentially this bottom fabric around that loop or around that bend. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself three fourths of an inch. And I do a lot of measuring on my finger. So I'm actually just going to do this first fingertip width, and then I'm gonna sew that in place and do the exact same thing for the other side. Friends, we are at the final step, which is hemming. Um, again, this is probably one of my longer projects. I've been making this, as you can see, I've had like three outfit changes. So I've been working on this for a couple of days. Um, and honestly, that's okay. So let's go ahead and hem this baby and then we'll try it on. Now for the record, I have already finished my edges because again, I'm anti-fray. I don't want any fraying because that makes your garment look unprofessional. I mean, if you're into the fraying or if that's the look, definitely go for it. But because I want this to have a more finished look, I am going to go ahead and finish all of my edges. So there we go. Okay, and so here we are trying it on. 
So I pulled my straps like all the way up. Um, we've got pockets here, loving the length. So I will put this on and like legit style. Okay, it. so let's talk about some final thoughts on this dress, constructing the dress, everything like that. Um, I do love the dress. I like the fit. I do think that I could have sized down because um, I am not sure about, you know, um, how much extra ease there is here. It could also be the fabric choice because this fabric is very like, I don't know, um, very loose weave. So I do wish that I had also won't, uh, used a matching thread because I don't know if I'm like loving this white and how it's kind of highlighting there. Um, I, for me, the pockets feel like they're a little too low. So if I remake this dress or if I make it again, I'm going to raise the pockets up. So that's something to consider before you go into making this. Um, but otherwise, I really love the drape. I love the way that this casing here makes it so that you can kind of have more flexibility with how this even looks and feels on. So that is a plus. Um, one more thing that I would do differently is I would absolutely iron all the things. I am not an anti-ironer, but this is my very first sew along that I've ever done. So, um, you know, it took a lot of time, took a couple of days. So yeah, I do hope that you all enjoy it. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel, drop your comments, suggestions, etc. below, things I could be doing better. Um, yeah, and so my first sew along, thanks so much for joining me.